Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here. I, I got a couple playlists I'm dropping on YouTube. I, I, li I like this idea and plan. One, because it's fun for me to be able to do this kind of stuff. Reflecting on my experiences in special operations, the CIA, and also owning a company that's all about preparedness called Fieldcraft Survival. A big shout out to Kevin Estella, who, <laughs> well, bam. Look at all that handsome man right there. Look at that handsome man. He made the cover made the cover, oh, right there, made the cover of American Outdoor Guide and Phil Craft Survival, learn from the experts, top tier training and gear. Big shout out Kevin Estella. If you're not following him, make sure you follow Kevin Estella. Does Kevin Estella have a YouTube channel? I feel like he should. Eh, whatever. Go to Phil Craft Survival's channel. <laughs> um, Phil Craft Survival's channel, a lot of followers, a, a lot of content if you're into that kind of thing. Guys, I wanted to start this new playlist, this new series called um, Story Behind the Photo. A lot of guys have asked me, they're like, uh, Mike, uh, you have a crap ton of photos. I wish I would have thought to do that. You took a lot of photos. And I'm like, actually, if you notice in the photos, I'm the guy that they're taking a picture of. So... I'm Asian. I love photography. It's what I do. I love it. It's actually a, a secret. I mean, my first job ever was working for my family business, which is a photography shop and processing um, 35 millimeter photo. That was my first job ever. And I grew up as a closet photographer, even had a photography business where I took wedding photos. Yep, that's me. I'm that guy. But I, it's a secret of mine that I just told everybody in the world because I love it. I'm passionate about it. I don't want to make my passions, my true passions, my job. So most of the pictures, somebody's doing that and taking pictures. I did take a lot of pictures, but of nothing very significant, things that I thought were pretty, but with not like a photojournalist mindset, but a lot of people took pictures of me. This is not me holding the camera on myself like a selfie. I don't think selfies existed back then. But let me tell you the story behind this. You can read a little bit of this, but I'm gonna tell you physically the story of this specific picture because I remember the time, the place, even the moment that I took this picture. So you can see on the board there, there's a big segment, which is the board that has the people's pictures. Those are all soldiers that were members of third special forces group that were killed in combat. Um, all of these men were killed um, in the time frame that I served in third special forces group. The specific person that I'm holding my hand, you can see, I mean, let's just stop and assess like me. That's me in that picture. Uh, it doesn't look like me because I'm the bearded weirdo now. But that's me when I was in the commanders in extremist force and I was an assaulter. Um, looking very handsome, looking like a K-pop star, no big deal. Um, but if you look at my hand, that's around a gentleman by the name of Sergeant Jason Palmerton. Now, what's fascinating about this specific picture is this, I believe, is 2007 in Iraq. Jason was killed in 2005 in Afghanistan. I was in Afghanistan with Jason when he was killed in in. Uh, 05. That was years prior, obviously. I wasn't literally with him. He was on another detachment in the same area of operation in the same group. So uh, what's, what's really intimate about this picture is my roommate in Afghanistan during 05 uh, rotation was my 18 Charlie. His name was Lee. I won't say his last name because I want to ma maintain his uh, privacy. But his best friend in the world was Jason. And I was with him when we found out Jason was killed. And that was very hard. Both Jason and another buddy of his were killed in combat. This is his best friend. Not like an associate or some dude he knew. This was his best friend, is his best friend. And he was killed when I was with him in the same country in Afghanistan, in the same group. And so what, what this board represented was you had all the guys that were killed in combat in the middle. And then on the left side of the board, you had all the patches um, and the call sign patches of, I'm sorry, not the call sign patches, but call sign patches is what we call the patch that we wear on our shoulder. But it had the initials of the guys that were killed. And what you would do is you would pick it off 
the board, put it on your left shoulder, go out into combat, and we conducted offensive combat operations every single night. And if you killed the target or the bad guy, you would take that patch, pull it off, and you would put it in Latin in the vindicated side, the vindico side of, of the board. And you notice right above my great hair right there, you notice the, the word or the letters JP, Jason Palmerton. All of those names above it are other guys like Price, like Goodwin, like uh, Tony Yost. Um, uh, Tony Yost was my 18 Bravo Special Forces Weapon Sergeant Instructor um, and then joined and went back to group, third group, when he was killed in Iraq in 2005. So this was our way of showing our, our uh, loyalty to the regiment, but also our consciousness to sacrifice that we are doing every single night. Uh, we didn't want to forget about the men who were killed in combat prior, and the best way to honor them was to carry them with us into battle, and then when we vind vindicated their names, transfer them to the vindicted or, or vindication side of the board. Here's what I'll tell you about this trip. I was a member of an aggressive counterterrorism unit called the Third Group Commanders and Extremist Force, known as B23, one of the most aggressive units that I've ever served in that you speed, surprise, and violence of action every single night they went out, that we went out to vindicate our brothers that were killed in combat. Guys, I want to give you that story. I hope you're tuning in because we have a whole bunch of things to talk about. What I hope to do in progressing this, if you like it, meaning you're commenting, subscribing, and hitting that little notification bell, is that I will bring in guests like Jocko, like Andy, like Jack Carr, all these good buddies of mine who have served in combat and have them tell the story behind the photo because only the person behind the photo can tell the story of the photo. And I think we're archiving history here and it'd be my pleasure. I got a, a whole bunch more to talk about because I have a whole crap ton of photos. This is from my Instagram, mike.a.glover, available in the links below. Also, mikegloveractual.com, where you could find this and so much more of everything that I got going on. Thank you. Till next time. See you later.